Hi, beautiful friends and bookish fam. My name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad that you are here. And if you are a returning subscriber, as always, I appreciate you so, so much. Today we are here to do my November TBR with the My Bad TBR game. All right, everybody, we are back to using my own personal TBR game, the My Bad TBR game. As y'all know, I skipped October because I wanted to do Spookopolathon, so I played Spookopoly instead, and I'm very glad to be getting back to my own TBR game. But of course, before we can get into the gameplay and the challenge pools, we do have to recap how I did in October. Now, I'm not gonna lie, y'all, October was kind of a shit show in terms of reading. That's just because I felt slumpy the vast majority of the month, but luckily I did a pretty good job with my TBR, so we shouldn't be in much danger. So if y'all remember, I had to roll over triptych from September's TBR into October's TBR. Triptych was a challenge pull for the month of September, but because the audiobook had a very long wait at my library, it did not come in in time. Luckily, it did come in for me in the month of October, so I did end up reading that, so that has been satisfied. The first challenge pull for the month of October was to do a random number generator and let that select my read. That actually selected another Karen Slaughter. It was to read False Witness, which I did read. I think it was one of my very first reads in the month of October. The next challenge I pulled was to read a banned book, and if you watch my TBR, y'all know that I was not excited about the prospect of having to read a banned book because there was no banned books that I was actually interested in reading. I pretty much knew at the time of filming that video that I was not going to seek out a banned book and so I didn't. I didn't satisfy that and basically my punishment for this is that I'm just not going to be able to satisfy this challenge prompt for one of the reading challenges that I'm doing. I'm going to go ahead and accept that this is just not a challenge that I'm going to be able to satisfy and I'm okay with that. Challenge number three was to read the next book in the True North series by Serena Bowen. That was Speakeasy, which I believe was number five. I did read that one. Challenge number four was to start the Gold Rush Ranch series by Elsie Silver. This is another one that I actively made the decision not to continue with. I got maybe four percent into the audiobook and I just realized that it wasn't what I was wanting. Y'all know that I'm very particular about the romances that I read. It has to have very specific components and while I did enjoy Heartless by Elsie Silver and while I do plan on continuing in her Chestnut Spring series, I don't necessarily know if I loved her enough to go ahead and be in two series of hers at once. Now I may reconsider this series after I finish the Chestnut Spring series but for right now I'm okay putting the Gold Rush Ranch series aside and not continuing it at all. Getting into the actual rounds of gameplay for Spookopoly, my very first role was to read a book with mostly orange on the cover. For that I read All the Sinners Bleed by S.A. Cosby and I did read that. Next for a spooky book I chose Gone Tonight by Sarah Buchanan. I read that as well. Next I drew a chance card and on that chance card was From Below by Darcy Coates. That is actually one that I DNF. Again, I don't know whether that was a result of me being in a slump and it just not doing much for me. I have no idea but I really don't think that me and Darcy Coates get along just because The Haunting of Ashburn House kind of had me feeling the same way and that I couldn't really connect to the story or the characters. I ultimately liked the direction that it took but it wasn't anything mind-blowing and when I was trying to read From Below even though I loved the concept of the story I just could not get connected or invested into it and it was exactly not what I needed when I was in the slump. I needed something that was going to fully grab my attention and this just wasn't it so I went ahead and did a hard DNF for that book. Next I had to do a poll pick and the winner of the poll was Finley Donovan Knocks Him Dead which is the second book in the Finley Donovan series and I did read that. Next I landed on Hannibal Lecter, which is basically a prompt to read a book with a body part in the title. I read Finger Lickin' 15 by Janet Ivanovich, which is the 15th book in the Stephanie Plum series. I did read that. And then the very final role I did as part of that official TBR landed me on the prompt to read Highest Rated. For that, I selected the next book in the Desert Plain series by Victor Methos called An Unreliable Truth, and I did read that. Since making that video, I did do a handful of other Spookopoly roles because I ran out of TBR books that I needed to read. So in the middle of vlogs, I was doing other roles, but that wasn't officially considered part of my TBR. So I'm not going to go over them here, but you are welcome to check out those vlogs if you are interested in knowing what I read or waiting for my wrap up at the end of October. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get into the challenge pulls, and I think I'm going to be kind to myself. I am going to go ahead and pull my standard number of three, but I think if I don't manage to read all of the challenges or the TBR game prompts, I'm not going to allow myself any punishments. I know that technically I don't have to take punishments for challenge pulls. I only have to take punishments for my TBR game, but I do consider the challenge pulls as something that I need to do in the month that I've selected them, and I do tend to take punishments if I don't complete them. But I've mentioned in this video already and then in my past vlogs that there was just something going on with me in October and I started to feel a little bit slumpy, but I don't necessarily feel like a full-on slump. I don't feel like disengaging from books or the online bookish community. In fact, my instinct is still to always be listening to an audiobook. But anytime I pick up an audiobook, I can't connect to it. I can't engage with it. And I think that is because I'm slumpy. I think my brain just kind of needs a little bit of a break. That is especially true as work has been very busy and I also recently started my next grad course. And 
so I feel kind of fried. I feel like I'm kind of hitting a wall. And so because of that, I don't know how November is going to go. I don't know if I'm going to want to read at all. I don't know if I'm going to want to read a little bit. I don't know if I'm going to want to read a little bit, just nothing that's on the TBR that I'm about to select. I have no idea how November is going to go. And so I'm going to kind of be kind to myself with regard to my challenge pulls and my TBR game. Also on that note, at the very end of this video, after the gameplay, after we have selected my November TBR, I have an announcement to make and also a little bit of an update on what you can expect from me with regard to content in November. So stay tuned for that. But now that all of that rambling is out of the way, let's go ahead and get into challenge pull number one. Hades and Persephone. So this is the Hades and Persephone series by Scarlett St. Clair. This is perfect because I actually just received the first book from Hades perspective in the mail. I think it was for October in the Facebook gifting group that I'm a part of. And I didn't pick that up right away because I had other things on my TBR. So now I'm actually going to be getting to that sooner than I was expecting. So I'm quite happy about that. All right, draw number two. Random number generator. Sorry, y'all. My ink was like running out or something when I printed these. It's barely legible, but this basically means that I go to my Goodreads Want to Read shelf and I let a random number generator choose what I'm going to read. I obviously don't know what that is right now, but as soon as I know, I will pop it up here on the screen for you. And then draw number three. I should say that I am definitely in no mental headspace to be tackling a complex fantasy. So if I do grab a fantasy, I will probably be putting it back just because I know that I'm not going to get to it. So, all right, the final challenge. Finley Donovan. Okay, that means I need to read the third book in the Finley Donovan series. And I'm totally fine with that because I really enjoyed book number two. And I just know that the shenanigans are going to continue. The good thing about this is that if I read this, I will be officially caught up in the series. Now I know a new release is coming out, I believe next year. So I won't be caught up for long, but at least I will be caught up for now. All right, so those challenge pulls were pretty kind to me. I don't really have any reservations about any of the books that were selected. Like I said, though, I don't know what my mood is going to be like in November. I don't know if I'm going to actually want to pick up any of these, even though in theory I want to read them all but we're gonna see and now let's go ahead and jump into the gameplay. All right everybody it is time for the next round of the My Bad TBR game. We took a break in October to play Spookopoly but now we are back. The board should be exactly as I left it for September's TBR. We are going to go ahead and just do the standard six draws unless the board is unkind to me. So starting with draw number one. All right, so that is a very not unkind card. That is a very good card because a queen actually allows me to move one of my pawns directly into home base. I think I'm going to go ahead and just move this guy into his home base. All right, my very first draw was a queen and queen is a special card because a queen allows me to move a pawn from the playing field into home base. This time I selected a blue. So now one of my blue little guys is safe in home base and it cannot be touched. And obviously no book was selected for this. Draw number two. All right, so we're going to move the yellow pawn forward five. One, two, three, four, five book box. So that just basically means that I need to read a book that has come in one of my bookish subscription services. And y'all know I always have something coming in from book of the month. So that will work out perfectly. All right, next I drew the number five and the color yellow. This landed me on the prompt to read a book box selection. Now I don't have anything that I'm 100% set on reading. I do definitely need to read some of the recent book of the month selections that I still have on hold at my library. Those need to come in so that I can get to them. So some of the options that I currently have are one I'm Dead by Hannah Morrissey, The Unmaking of June Farrow by Adrian Young, Starling House by Alex E. Harrow, The Stranger Upstairs by Lisa M. Matlin, Michelle Campbell's The Intern. I definitely have a lot of Book of the Month selections that recently came in that I still desperately need to read, especially by the end of the year. And so I'm just waiting on them to come in from my library. So those are all top contenders. But if none of them come in from the library, I think I'm going to go ahead and prioritize The Housemaid's Secret by Frieda McFadden. This was one of the books that came in my Box of Books subscription. I did an unboxing of that in a vlog that is going to be coming up before this video, but it is a new bookish subscription service that I've been trying and really, really loving because it's so, so personalized. I got The Housemaid in the first box and then she sent me the sequel, The Housemaid's Secret. And I'm really, really interested to get to this because I really, really loved The Housemaid. So now if none of the other ones come in from the library, I will go ahead and prioritize this, but I can tell you that all of those other ones, as they come in from the library, I'm going to be reading them. So whether or not they're on this TBR, they're going to get read when they come in. Draw number three.
All right, so that is another very kind draw. I don't have to move any pawns. This is a get out of jail free, so I am exempt from punishment when I use this card. All right, next I drew a king. And y'all know that is a get out of jail free card, which means I can hang on to that. And if for some reason I don't finish a TBR, I do not have to take a punishment. And typically with my TBR game, a punishment means A, I either have to roll over the book into the next month or unhaul it completely, whether I own it or it's just on my virtual TBR. Unhauling it means I will not be reading that book. So if for some reason I don't finish my TBR in November, I can use a king and avoid a punishment, meaning I don't have to unhaul it, but I also don't have to roll it over. So he is going in my stash with all of the other kings that I currently have waiting for me. Draw number four. All right, I got the number nine and the color blue. I currently only have one active blue pawn out on the board now, so I'm gonna go ahead and flip the board and we will see what we get. All right, let's move blue. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that means color generator. That means I have to use a random color generator and that will select the color of the book that I next read. All right, then I drew the number nine and the color blue and that landed me on color. And so what that means is that I had to use a random color generator to select a book with that color on the cover. Now I got an interesting, it said it was like a maze yellow and I really had almost no books with that color. The closest thing that I could find, The Lonely Hearts Book Club by Lucy Gilmore. This is a book that I actually picked up on a whim when I was in Barnes & Noble one day. I was in there for a completely different purpose and I saw this. This was their fiction selection for the month and I just thought it sounded very sweet and heartwarming. It follows Sloane Parker. She lives a small contained life as a librarian in her small contained town. She never thinks of herself as lonely but still she looks forward to that time every day when old curmudgeon Arthur McLaughlin comes to browse the shelves and cheerfully insult her. Their sparring is such a highlight of Sloane's day that when Arthur doesn't show up one morning she's instantly concerned and then another day passes and another. Anxious, Sloane tracks the old man down only to discover him all all but bedridden and desperately struggling to hide how happy he is to see her. Wanting to bring more cheer into Arthur's gloomy life, Sloane creates an impromptu book club. Slowly, the lonely misfits of their sleepy town begin to find one another and in their book club, they find joy of unlikely friendship. Because as it turns out, everyone has a special book in their heart and a reason to get lost and eventually found within the pages. That just sounds super cute, sweet, heartwarming, definitely different from anything that I've been reading the past few weeks. And so I actually thought that it sounded pretty perfect for kind of what I'm in the mood for at the moment. So hopefully this is one that I get to in November. Draw number five. All right, so I got a number seven and unfortunately it was yellow because with a seven, I can typically split the move between two pawns if needed, but I only have one active yellow pawn out on the playing field. So I just have to move the yellow a straightforward seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, friend pick. So that means I'm going to have to get a friend to choose my next TBR book. All right, then I drew a number seven and the color yellow and this landed me on friend pick. So I actually posted a request in a discord that I have. It's for my channel, but it's particularly for those who regularly attend my weekly reading sprints and I asked them to go to my Goodreads want to read shelf and make some selections and I received a handful and I randomly selected and the one that won was Never Lie by Frieda McFadden. However, because I might be reading The Housemaid's Secret by Frieda McFadden, I think I'm also going to have a backup just in case. Hi friends, so editing Brittany here. So what I was about to say was that because I might be reading The Housemaid's Secret by Frieda McFadden as a book box selection, I was going to originally select a backup friend pick just in case so I wouldn't read two Frieda McFadden's in a month. However, literally just within hours of filming this video, my library hold for Just Another Missing Person by Jillian McAllister came in and that is a book of the month box selection. So I am going to be selecting that as my book box pick and then I will definitely be reading Never Lie by Frieda McFadden as my friend pick. All right and then the final draw for this round Whoa, another queen. Okay, that is very generous. I can't remember even pulling one queen before and now I've pulled two queens in one round of gameplay. This board must sense that I am desperate for this to go well this month. The only pawn that I currently have more than one of out on the playing field is red. So I'm gonna go ahead and move one of my red guys to home base. And that's it for this round, y'all. Out of six picks, I only had to pick three books. So, so far, November's TBR is looking pretty nice. All right, and then the final draw was yet another queen. That has definitely never happened in all of my rounds of gameplay. I think I might have pulled maybe one queen in the entire year plus that I've now been playing this game since being back on booktube. And I got two in one time, which is perfect because that means one of my red pawns now is safely in home base and cannot be touched. And I'm that much closer to finishing this round of gameplay. And again, no book is selected for that. All right, everybody. So 
so far here are some of the books that are on my radar for November. Of course I do still have to do a random number generator draw and some of these are tentative because I don't know what book box book I will be reading but this is some of them. Overall I think the challenge pools and definitely the gameplay were pretty kind to me and so I'm gonna hope and pray that I can get to all of these in the month of November but we're gonna see. And now I'm grabbing my coffee because I have a brief announcement and I wanted to kind of discuss a little bit about November content. So the very first thing is the announcement that I will be doing my best to participate in Bookmas this year. If you're not familiar, Bookmas is basically the bookish version of Vlogmas. I don't know if it was created by Haley in Bookland, but I basically know she kind of pioneers it like she does it every year. And I think her doing it kind of made it really take off. And essentially the goal is for me to post one video a day in December leading up to Christmas. I think she does it until leading up to New Year's Eve. I will not be doing that. So basically 25 videos in a row in the month of December. I did it last year quite successfully, although it was very, very difficult. I was essentially editing and filming nonstop throughout the month of December. However, my life looks a little bit different this year in December, particularly as I have two things going on that I didn't last year. So first is the fact that I'm actually going to be gone for five days in December. I'm flying back home to California on the 19th to see my family and I won't be back until the 23rd. Now, obviously that's very late in December. So by that point, I should have most of the content at least filmed. But considering the only opportunity I have to film videos is on the weekends, you can imagine how much filming is going to go into 25 different videos, plus all the videos that I still have to film in the month of November. Also on top of that, I was not in a grad program last year. I started a grad program in August. I've already completed my first class and I just started my second one. This second one is already turning out to be quite a doozy and this class is not expected to be over until December 17th. December 17th is the final day of class. Now by that point, because I like to work ahead, I hope to have a lot of the assignments done by that point so that the last couple of weeks in December are just like finishing up a few things here and there. So I hope not to have a ton of work to do by that point, but that does mean that I'm going to have to push myself very, very hard in November to get to that point. And I am still going to have to be doing some of that schoolwork in December. So all of that is going to affect and interfere with my ability to film and edit Bookmas videos. So I have kind of made the decision to pull back on content in November. I typically upload about two videos a week. That is my comfort zone. And even then it is quite a lot. And even though two videos is pretty much my comfort zone, I'm not going to be able to maintain two videos a week in November and try to get ahead in my grad program and try to get ahead on filming and editing Bookmas videos. So all of that being said, you may not be seeing the standard number of videos from me in the month of November. I will definitely be doing my typical monthly content, such as my new release video, my book of the month prediction video. And I'm basically going to kind of work on getting ahead in terms of filming Bookmas videos. Now I can't do that with a lot of videos because some of the videos I have to wait as long as possible to film because a lot can change, you know, within the last couple of weeks of the year. I can find my new favorite book in the last week of the year, but I'm going to film as much as I can in advance so I can get started on that process and try to be successful with Bookmas. Now that doesn't necessarily mean I'm always going to be successful at uploading every single day. It could be every other day or whatnot, or there could be days when I'm able to edit a lot. And so you get two videos on one day instead of one. And then the next day I skip. I don't know how it's going to look. It could be all over the place, but the goal is essentially to give you 25 videos in the month of December. You're actually going to be getting a couple more than that because after the 25th, which is a Monday, there's still a whole week left in the year. And so there will be a couple of other staples coming out, you know, like my January TBR and things like that. But still, I hope that you will join me. I hope that you will come along for the ride. And also if there's anything that you like to see in Bookmas content, please feel free to comment down below and let me know some of the things that you might like to see. I would love to hear. But anyway, y'all, that's it. That's all that I wanted to talk with you about for this video. I'm going to go ahead and get going. If you made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty, but you want to let me know that you are here, go ahead in honor of Christmas and leave me a Santa Claus emoji to let me know that you were here. I appreciate it so, so much. It definitely helps my channel. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I aim to post one video a week, sometimes two, depending on what I could do. And I would sure love to connect with you on one of those next videos or on any of my other social media platforms, which I always leave linked down below along with the books that I discussed in this video. Until next time, guys. Bye.